All right, so welcome to the second video on file format reverse engineering. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at how we can identify files of interest. Now you might already know what files you wanna go after and reverse engineer. If you just know that the application saves some files somewhere and you wanna know what data is actually being saved, we can use ProcMom to do that. So I know that uh, when I launch uh, the Book of Demons demo, it's going to be running as a process called R2G Launcher Demo. Um, we can do that by just opening up the task manager and seeing what application actually runs under details. Um, but we know that the application uh, is gonna be from this file here just by playing the game previously. So what I wanna do is under ProcMon, once we get this started up, we're gonna be prompted with some filters. Now, when we start capturing, we're gonna be given a ton of stuff. Let me give you just an example here. Explore EXE, registry, um, CTFmon, everything that this system has running on it right now is making Windows API calls. And ProcMon now is capturing the details of all of those things and displaying them here. There's a ton of information. So we absolutely wanna make sure that we're filtering accordingly, otherwise we're gonna be searching through so much stuff. So there's some basic filters that come up uh, with process monitor, we'll leave those. And what we wanna do is take a look at the process name field and set a filter on that. So you wanna say process name is, we can also do contains or excludes for other filters, but we're gonna do exe. So our, our R2G is return to games, the name of the publisher, and then launcher demo is just the name that they applied to it. So as we see, there's nothing on this list right now because we haven't started the game and it's not running. Let's go ahead and fire this up and we'll see a bunch of stuff show up here in a minute. Also what I wanna do is load my profile. Now down here, uh, I've set up a profile for set four. Um, that is gonna be my character that I've already set up beforehand. And I've already played for a few minutes just to unlock a couple of basic things. And once this loads, we'll go ahead and uh, just exit the game so we can make sure we get a capture of everything. Right. Now, as I sort of alluded to before, um, if we go into a dungeon and we start um, killing things and collecting gold and unlocking new cards or finding items, um, all of that stuff is probably going to be maintained in memory. And then at certain points in the game, if this is an autosave game, every you know 30 seconds or something, it might actually flush that data to disk in case the game crashes, we don't lose everything for the whole session. Uh, but definitely once you load the game, it's going to read the save file. And once you exit the game, it's going to write that save file. It has to do that for persistence. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and do that to make sure we capture that event. Now what we can do is press this little uh, magnifying glass here to stop the capture. And notice how we're not streaming any more capture events down here on the bottom left. We have everything set up that this actually does. So things like create file, query security file, reg query value, these are all uh, Windows API calls that uh, this particular application is, is making. Uh, so it's the process itself that is ending up making these things. So these could be sub modules under this that are uh, responsible for doing this. Maybe not necessarily the application uh, itself, but things that it's actually loading. We can see here for some reason it's actually doing read file on this uh, bod demo pack quite often uh, for some strange reason. I'm not sure what this file is, but I doubt it's a save file unless it's actually streaming stuff to the file all the time. So uh, some of the things that we wanna notice are probably in the very beginning uh, when we open the application, or way down at the end, right before we actually close the application. So at the end, once we close, we know that there's gonna be some type of final save and we wanna be able to hunt that down. So there's a ton of stuff going on here, things like registry and whatnot. I'm pretty sure it's not saving my game file data into the registry. So I wanna be able to wipe all of that stuff out and get rid of it. Um, I do know that I'm gonna be interested in anything that is related to write file. So what I can do is come back into here and then on the actual operation, I can set up a filter that has contains and I'll do write. It doesn't even need to be the name, the full name of the API call. So now we have write file. 
Um, the types of write file um, actions that occur, occur on all of these files here. So uh, the re return to games, launcher demo log, obviously a log file for what's going on. There's the beta log, it's constantly being hammered here. And then at some point, way down at the bottom, we will see some other stuff. So we'll see set for temp files, uh, game general avatars.dat, which is interesting. Uh, there is my uh, beta log set for profile general dot dat. These are all things that are really interesting to me. And I want to see if any of them might have anything to do with the save data stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that location. Let's go there. All right, so a couple of things that I want to look at. One of them is going to be the set for profile. We'll open this up in O1O. And another one is going to be the general dat. And if I go into set for files, uh, there's some other files here. I'm not sure what these dirty files are. Game general, game bod. Uh, let's see here, cards.dat. That's interesting to me. Slot zero, demons.save, probably the demons that we've encountered. Uh, right off the bat here, even though this is a binary file, looks like they're saving uh, binary like bytes as strings. So we have ASCII over here in the right and all of our hex over here. For some reason, it looks like uh, you know 30 is like a maybe not seen or identified before. Um, and then 31 might be like a scene or identified. Uh, let's see, there's our cards. There's another cards.dat. One of the nice features that we have inside of O and O is that we can do comparisons on files. Um, so with this question mark here, we can compare two files and the two files that we can compare are, let's see, should be able to just quickly get cards.dat from slot one. Then there's another card set that's from slot two. I'm gonna do the binary byte by byte matching and we'll do compare. So what's cool here is that we can very quickly see that there's a difference here in the header. Uh, so the magic number of this file has two different um, versions. Right here, it looks like these are a match. So they're bod potion card. Um, I wonder if it's a list of specific cards locked or unlocked, differences here. So we can then follow this down. It looks like the very first file is actually larger than the second one. So that's nice. Um, some of the other things that we can see here are um, in my profile. So what I'll do is close one of these versions here that I had opened up earlier. Uh, we see that there's this CRC text, right? Now, normally I wouldn't think of like this being a CRC right off the bat, but it might be nice to actually consider what, what this would be if it were a CRC. So what I'll do is I'll take a hold of, copy all of the, <laughs> so what I'll do is select all of the data in here except for the CRC, and then I'm going to click the, not this button, Let's see here, do this checksum button. And we'll specify all of these algorithms. So we'll hit OK. And then down below in the checksum window that popped open, we have all these algorithms listed. Now, uh, there is a possibility that the checksum could also be computed over the CRC in here as well, but we'll give this a shot. What we're looking for is this last D word here. And it looks like if we go to a CRC 32, A604501. A604501 in Little Indian. So if we want to make modifications to this particular file, we turn out this is important. Uh, it was a very quick way of being able to calculate checksums over a bunch of different checksums and cryptographic hashes to quickly identify what this might be. Now, originally, if I would have decided to do this entire value here um, and done this instead, and ran it, I just wouldn't have got a match. So I brought this back down and just try to interrogate or investigate um, like that. So that's one, uh, another really good use of this application is allows us to do some quick calculations like that. Um, in terms of the demon saved and the cards, those are other important files. 
Um, I think there's going to be some other things too. Did I get our general dot dat? Did there's not a lot of information in there, and I think there was still like one more file or folder that we had to go through, which was like slot two. It's another cards. Um, so I wonder if the slots has to do with like the number of save slots that we have available to us. Like maybe you can only make four uh, profiles. I'm not entirely sure. All right, this is interesting. So we've got achievements, dot, dat, and avatars. Before, um, I think we might have actually opened up the avatars window. Let me pop open the game real fast again. That's why it's really important to actually play or use the application that you're uh, trying to reverse engineer so you can understand what this might actually mean. So you have this avatars here, and then it looks like the very first one is unlocked for us. And if we want to unlock the second one, there's some like research cost associated with that. So as we play this game, we're gonna get the ability to unlock all of these avatars. And if we go back to here, inside of this, I'm just gonna say, go ahead and reload. Uh, it looks like we're going to be able to, or perhaps able to, specify which things we have unlocked. So here's the first one. Maybe if I do this and then save it, and go back into the game. So that kicks me out of that. If I come back in here, maybe if I close the game, exit. Now we have avatars saved on this. We'll open up again real fast. Go back into avatars. And that is not unlocked. Okay. Let's add a couple more. All right, so it looks like it rewrote or overwrote this. I don't see any CRC. I'm trying to scan to see if there's anything that looks like it might be a CRC. This is all ASCII, so that looks okay. That's not a CRC. This gotta be just like a header, a magic number. It matches the achievements file. Um, also, all of the achievements are probably just built out into this too, which we need to understand. All right, so let's open Book of Demons demo one more time. Go back into here. Okay, now they unlocked. So for some really strange reason, when I just unlocked, there's one, two, three, four now. Now we have one, two, three, four. When I just unlocked one, it didn't take it. I don't understand why that happened. Uh, at any rate, being able to interact with the files that you're trying to understand uh, and then reload them into the application that actually is responsible for parsing them is gonna help out a lot. Um, if you haven't already noticed, one of the key components of reverse engineering, any type of file or protocol or anything is gonna be having something that actually understands that file format. If we don't have anything that understands this particular fi file format and all we have is the avatars.dat, then all we can do are just make educated guesses. Things like the first four bytes being a magic number, just like on any um, Windows uh, application. So if I go into here and I throw this into this, um, MZ header is gonna be something that always appears on portable executable files, right? So these types of things are things that we're gonna know just from intuition and understanding file formats in general. Right here, if we highlight this, it's gonna tell us that's 16 bytes. So maybe the next value here ends up being 16 bytes. And that's 16 bytes selected, and it ends up being R2G, Avatar Manager. And then the next bytes after here are something else. Perhaps there's something and a size, or maybe this uh, is also a size here for this string. So these are gonna be type of guesses that we can make. But wait, once we get down to this point, it's gonna be nearly impossible to understand what this particular 30 at this offset relates to. Like what 
what um, avatar um, until we actually dig into this and start playing with this file format and the application that's responsible for um, processing or interrogating that. So now that we're starting to get a little bit of intuition, we need to start documenting all of this stuff and what all of this junk actually means. So to do that, we can actually build templates uh, in ONL, or we can build templates in Katai Struct. What we're going to do is target building templates with ONO specifically. Once you get that down, uh, doing it with Katai Struct is going to be something that's pretty straightforward. Just read the docs, understand how to write the YAML, and then uh, the compiler and the web ID will actually do all the stuff for you. So until then, we're going to take a look at, in video three, templating with ONO. We'll see you then.